<laughs> Thank you very much for your interest in space exploration. And our meeting has a special occasion as well because on some days we are supposed to celebrate the Cosmonautic Day. This is the first launch in space in 1961. It was an incredible decade at that time, I remember the space. The first spacewalk, the first step on the moon, and my generation was motivated by these events. But today I'm not supposed to speak about space history. And I would like to tell you about nowadays, about our space future, what we are doing right now in space. You know that we have on, in space, I says, International Space Station, and there are 14 countries are taking part, and countries from ESA, European Space Agency, Russia, US, Canada, Japan, and Great Britain as well is taking part actively, and recently your citizen, Timothy Peak, he flew on board ASS, we trained a lot with him, we didn't fly, but we trained a lot. In my presentation, I will tell you how life is arranged in space, what means space station, I will tell you about launches, landings, EVA, science experiments, meal in space, uh, sport in space as well. I will show you a lot of video and photos about our planet and photos made from, from ISS. It's incredible, very, very spectacular. And at the end of my presentation, we will fly with you throughout of the space station and you will have a big picture how the space station is big, large, and how guys are living there. I think it will be very, very interesting. Bring up and bring down uh, our crewmates on board ISS, but um, SpaceX company and uh, Boeing company this summer is uh, expect to test new two spacecraft and it will increase our reliability and our possibilities to fly on board ISS. It's maybe two weeks before our launch when we can have when we have possibility to give some remarks, maybe notes about our spacecraft. Oh, this is our spacesuit Sokol, and we are using them only for launch and landing, just to save the crew, maybe in case of very severe situation like a fire or depress. We don't live on board space station in this suit because sometimes I I had a question, guys. How are you living six months in this spacesuit? No, we don't live. And we, we wear in space just a regular, regular garment, a t-shirt, shorts, maybe a flight suit, and you will see later. Uh, no, this is a funny photo, it's our tradition. Yes. After pressure check, yes, usually yes, we have this photo, it's tradition. And today is before the launch, we have a rocket rollout event and, and set up this is just yes, a regular train and just set up on the launch pad. The same launch pad uh, from this launch pad and uh, Yuri Gagarin launched 60, almost 60 years ago. And the rocket is, is, rocket is ready. And this is about three hours before, before launch. And we have seated it. And it's not meal, it's not what. The laboratory has the uh, European Space Agency and uh, NASA in, in Houston. This is real EVA in my. Uh, nine expedition with Mike Fink. This American suit, EVU, very reliable, very very good suit as well. Okay, we use this blue suit, so-called LCVG, liquid cooling ventilation garment. And this suit uh, provides comfortable atmosphere inside this, inside this uh, space suit and uh, help us to uh, to adjust temperature, comfortable temperature inside. If you pay attention, and this suit has a lot of tubes, and inside the tubes there are water, water, a lot of water, and water circulation provides uh, comfortable temperature. That is preparation for, for the EVA, one day before EVA. Just a moment, I will show you. I want to show you another film. Okay, it's not easy to get inside, but it's okay. It's a little bit tedious, but we have no choice. We have to go outside and work, and no choice. System problem to 
not avoid, to lessen, to soften impact of this problem. We have to exercise every day, two hours and a half, two hours and a half. This is type of hardware, like a, a, this is a treadmill and, oh, you know, treadmill, cycle ergometer, and we have, uh, I read, this is a resistance device. Yes, I will show you this, our partner. Oh, Scott, Scott Kelly. It's treadmill, US treadmill. I will show you how we can, how we can run. It's not easy in space, but we are using special harness around the treadmill. We can secure ourselves with the treadmill. And then it's just a speed and run. Cycle, cycle ergometer our bicycle and very un oh. mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. and unique hardware the most favorite for all cosmonauts and astronauts this is IRAT resistance device looks like crossbar for weight lifter on the ground and we can train all our muscles because, because our arms and our upper body is pretty well trained but as for our legs they are more vulnerable to the weight of this. and we have this is a special platform this is crossbar we can adjust it and this is handled to adjust the load and we can Exercise and making like a, some exercise like a squat, bench press, shoulder press, and biceps. There's a lot all our muscles. Okay. An astronaut. People with a great sense of humor. There is Nicole Stott. Yes, she 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 on the back side of the, behind me. <laughs> As if this is my hair. <laughs> okay, in a small video, more it takes about 15-20 minutes for the professional, of course, professional Austrian or cosmos. For the for the newcomer, new newcomers, this it takes much longer. Every cosmos has his astronaut has his blue box, blue container, and we can select before a launch any favorite toothpaste, paste, toothbrush, or shaving cream, and we have no what shower or bus, but we have a lot of towels and napkins, dry napkins, dry towels, wet napkins and w wet towels. And remove just toothpaste and a special trash bag. And I will show you how can can I shave. Yes, usual, regular is shaving cream. Okay, pay attention. My razor is flying. <laughs> but everything is controlled. <laughs> okay, napkin is ready. And this really is not so fast because a lot of water ball, water drops will spread is around me. Of course, really it's very very careful. Yes, I will show you later. And just to wash a hair, what should we do? Take a silver pack with water, add some water on the hair. This is uh, this is gel after okay I will show you how we can okay add some water and after getting water add some shampoo we have very good type two types of shampoo Russian DS very good and very very slowly we have to spread this yes on the, our yes head and then how can we remove the water by using towels Okay. As, as many as you want. All towers must be dried because we are using this water from atmosphere again, again. We have special system for reproducing water. 
uh, this is renewable water. And we are using not only water from the atmosphere, and even urine as well. Russia. It's California. You may see it. Again, what means space? Black nothingness. Black nothingness. Only our beautiful blue planet. What is this? Italy, yes. Sicily and Italy. This is uh, Etna volcano. It's a night Italy and Sicily. Night Italy. Oh. This is Naples, Naples and uh, uh, volcano Vesuvius. Vesuvius. This is with a large focal lens, the same volcano Vesuvius. This is uh, Mount Fuji, Japan. Very, very good picture. It's Cog Russian south. This is Caucasus and Elbrus. It's Elbrus in Mount Elbrus in summertime. This you can you may see a lot of glaciers, melting glaciers. This is Ararat. Ararat, beautiful. It's a it's from the vertical position Ararat. Maybe you will be able to see Noev Ark. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. I couldn't, might maybe you'll be able, maybe you'll be happier than me. This is Bermudas, Bagamas. You may just pay attention, a lot of color set, a lot of undertones. Sometimes it seems to me that the nature itself is a great painter, creating such masterpieces. If our hatches is open, and they start up crew evacuation. So hold soft landing. And just in five minutes, it's going to go to land. Rescue team is ready, open the hatch, pay attention. Yes, our descent moves are very, very black. This is thermal protection. When go through the plasma, there, there is temperature about 2,000 degrees. But when sitting inside the descent module, we feel nothing. It's okay. Very good is protection, very good protection. Catch is open and crew is ready for evacuation. It's me, next will be sent to me Sergei and Joe Cabin. It's my fourth mission in 2012. The first medical check, of course. I don't say that I feel good. Of course, it's motion sickness, but it's, it's, it's tolerable, tolerable. No smile on my face, but... <laughs> oh, there's a bus. Okay, I'm smiling. <laughs> and first tea. Sergei. And Joe Cullen. Gennady, thanks very much for the uh, presentation, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I have two questions for you, a few very brief ones. Number one, do you believe in life on other planets? And number two, if you do, have you ever seen anything that you cannot explain that makes you believe there are, that there is life on other planets? I don't believe in aliens. I believe in life, maybe somewhere else, like maybe on, on the exoplanet. I don't believe in aliens. And believe me, nobody knocked in our head. And the space nobody spoke to some astrobiologists. And right now, they maybe, maybe you, you know one as well. And uh, currently, they have two theories. One theory, of course, maybe we have life on the exoplanets. Because, because right now, scientists discovered about 4,000 exoplanets. Exoplanet means similar to Earth. And then they decided to select only planets with the same star, like our Sun. And from these 4,000, it turned out only 700 planets. And then they decided to measure distance 
within the star and planet, just to have pretty much the same temperature. Because if you're speaking about Big Bang, not about creator, it means one evolution. And from this 700, we have only 300 planets with the same temperature, approximately between minus 20 up to 25 temperature. Because our average tem temperature on the our planet, about annual temperature, about 25. And then they decided to select only exoplanets with the same inner structure, like on Earth, like an inner core, outer core, mantle, and ground crust. And from these 4,000 exoplanets, we got only 15. Only 15. And the closest one takes about 100 light years. Of, of course, we have more closest. This is Alpha Centauri. But we have no, there we have no such condition that I mentioned. This is one theory. The another theory of the astro astrobiologists, because we had only one Big Bang, we have only one universe, we have only one evolution, and we have only one civilization. Who knows? Time will tell. But you've, you've never actually seen anything that you couldn't explain. What? You couldn't, you've never seen anything in all your days never, in space that you never, couldn't explain. Nobody knocked at the door, nobody. <laughs> nobody. Okay. Of course, yeah, of course I believe. Maybe we have life somewhere, but right now we cannot yes, confirm it or prove it, no. It's, that will tell. Okay, young man at the top in there.